are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I just shot this same tag video uh, outside about four hours ago and my face was half bleached out by the sun and there was all kinds of construction that started up seven seconds after I pushed record. So that's gone into the trash and I'm going to do it again indoors. So This is the six degrees of separation tag. I was tagged by Lukash of Totally Pretentious a year ago. I actually did this tag about a year ago. I can't remember exactly when, but uh, sometime last year. And I want to do it again. It was originated by Peter Likes Books. I'll have links to those guys in the show notes. So with this tag, what you do is you choose two books that couldn't be more different from one another. And then you link them up through six degrees of separation. So a bridge of five books so that you're actually going to end up talking about seven to get the six degrees and i have chosen for you as the first book the belt a novel from saudi arabia by ahmed abodaman which i absolutely loved sometimes when i talk about this i haven't talked about it for a while but i've realized that for a while there i was describing it as a memoir i read it about four years ago and loved it, but my memory is dimming. But no, this is actually a novel. It's a heavily autobiographical, I think. Ahmed Abdelman is a uh, Saudi journalist, has been living in Paris for years. I think he actually did. Yeah, he wrote it in French. So it's translated from the French by Nadia Benabid. And he wrote it in French so that his daughter, who doesn't speak Arabic, could uh, read it. So it's heavily autobiographical about his childhood in the boonies of Saudi Arabia. If I can use a word like the boonies in connection with a country like Saudi Arabia. It's set in this uh, Saudi village steeped in family traditions and tribal culture. Any preconceptions you have about what you might find are dashed early in this novel. It's absolutely wonderful. If you want to try it, go to Extra Links to get this edition. Saki Books is the publisher of the edition I have and it's printed on lusciously heavy paper. It just feels really good in your hand. So if you care about those book nerdish things, find the Saki book edition. And I'm going to try to link it up with this novel from Wales, Country Dance by Margaret Evans, originally published in the 1930s. I should say that The Belt was originally published in the year 2000, the translation 2002. This novel was originally published in the 1930s, and it is an absolutely wonderful 100-page novella that I did as a buddy read with Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read and Ange of Beyond the Pages. This is one of Charlotte's favorite novels, and it was an absolute delight, one of the highlights of my buddy reading year to have her walk us through all the different layers of this novel. So, very different novels. I'm going to link them up. Uh, the first degree of separation is between this novel and a novel that I don't physically possess anymore. It's in a box somewhere in Canada called Bee Season by Myla Goldberg, an American novel. Also published in the year 2000, but that's not the connection. And it is a wonderful novel. The, the main character is a teenage girl in a Jewish American family who starts excelling at spelling bees and keeps rising to the different levels and almost becomes the spelling bee champion of the world or of the of america but her parents are also so screwed up that they don't even really notice her successes and it's a wonderful family story with a whole bunch of neurotic family dynam dynamics and i thought it was beautifully written the connection between the belt and the bee season is that both portray adolescent sexuality in the most searing and delightful of ways. So in this Saudi Arabian novel, a group of boys have their circumcision, and it's a big ritual in the culture, and they're given a week off school, and they walk around wearing special cloth wrapped around their midsection, and they get to lounge about, and everybody has to treat them like gold because this is their rite of passage and highly ceremonial. And one day during that week off... 
they are lounging around in the park and a one of their peers a teenage girl walks by them and shows she raises her skirt i don't imagine she was wearing a skirt but she somehow shows off more of her la bare legs than is socially acceptable and wiggle, wiggles her fanny as she walks by them and is just being a saucy <laughs> impudent <laughs> bad girl why she wants to and does successfully spark very painful erections in these young men and that was what she intended to do and that was her practical joke and i just love that passage so much and was so shocked to find it in the middle of this novel from saudi arabia and she doesn't get punished there's no misogynistic sort of consequences for her a naughty prank and I just thought it was uh, one of the most joyous moments of teenage sexuality in a novel that I've ever read. I absolutely loved it. And in B season, the, the protagonist has, I can't remember if he's a younger brother or an older brother, but he's about 15 years old. And there is a moment of private, how could I, let's, let's do the euphemism. There's a moment of private sexuality that is described with such humor insight and panache that I will never forget it and I remember being struck I remember being aroused it's beautifully sensuously written and wondering how did she know how did she get so deep into the male sexual brain as to be able to write this such a true private moment I absolutely loved it and that's the, the first degree of separation is the portrayal of adolescent sexuality in these two novels. My second degree of separation is between B Season and this novel, I think also from the 1930s, The Priory by Dorothy Whipple, a British novel put out by Persephone. Both novels portray really obtuse fathers. They're so stuck up in their head and so out of it and preoccupied by stupid stuff in their own lives that they completely ignore their children and there are severe consequences of their neglect. Just memorably obtuse, both fathers. This was a flawed novel that I really enjoyed far more than I should have for how flawed it was, and I did. It was a real page turner, and I will never forget that obtuse father. The third degree of separation is between The Priory by Dorothy Whipple and Evelyn Waugh's A Handful of Dust. And you may think that this is rather a lame a degree of separation, but both of these writers died the year I was born, 1966. <laughs> the fourth degree of separation is between Evelyn Waugh's A Handful of Dust. Let me say a bit about it. Um, I studied this in university and I reread it for pleasure a couple years ago. It has one of the most chilling uh, lines of dialogue in all of literature concerning a mistake over two characters, two important characters in the story, both of whom are named John. And when one of the characters makes that mistake and then the mistake is corrected, her reaction to that clarification is just chilled me to the bone and does every time I think of it. I am connecting it for the fourth degree of separation to a Canadian, a collection of short stories by a Canadian, I guess she's an American Canadian writer, Carol Shields, Various Miracles. This is the first thing I ever read by her, and I read it in the 1990s, and the, and the connection between these two is, I am not as big a fan of these authors as I used to be. When I reread this, there were things that um, I read enjoyed on the same level, but a lot of it I didn't care for as much, and I just don't care about Evelyn Waugh or think he's that great of a writer like I used to when I was young and silly as an undergrad. Carol Shields, I haven't reread this, so I, I want to hold out that I would enjoy this as much or more on a reread, but everything else I have reread or read for the first time by her in recent years has been dismally disappointing. So she just doesn't, her writing doesn't speak to me at all anymore, and I'm really disappointed. I considered her one of my favorite writers in the 1990s, and I met her at several literary readings, and uh, was sad that she died so young. She was about 60. Uh, she was a lovely person, but her writing doesn't speak to me anymore. So that's the connection. And the grammar geek in me is forging the next 
degree, what are we? The fifth degree of separation is between Carol Shields' various miracles and Daniel Minudin's In Other Rooms, Other Wonders. They're both collections of short stories, but that is way too <laughs> flimsy of a uh, connection. But both of them in their titles use a p pattern of adjective and plural noun, various miracles in other rooms, other wonders. Come on, I'm a grammar teacher. <laughs> and the sixth and final degree of separation is between this collection of short stories from Pakistan, Danielle Manedin's In Other Rooms, Other Wonders, and Margaret Evans's novella Country Dance. It's a very strong connection. I haven't read the Pakistan stories, but both are heavily focused on geographical borders and landowning families with dark secrets and dark family dynamics. Very strong thematic connection between the two. Very eager to read this. Any book coming out of Pakistan is fixated about borders, given the 20th century history. And Country Dance is very much a border novel. It's the borderiest novel in all of literature, it must be. The characters are, half of them are Welsh and the other half are English and the English characters are living in Wales and the Welsh characters are living, the Welsh characters are living in England and they go back and forth and there's all kinds of nationalistic uh, conflict and it's absolutely spellbinding. I'm assuming something similar will be at work here, but certainly based on the description of the stories, there are many such connections between the two works of fiction. So that is how I got from Amand Abeldamon's The Belt to Margiad Evans' Country Dance. So this was fun to do again and let me see who will I tag. I want to tag a couple new booktubers, very very new booktubers. Hardcover Hearts is her channel name. Uh, very new and uh, has arrived with such panache uh, in our midst on booktube and similarly great another great new booktuber who i love his channel so much called the weird book book club i will put links to those guys for sure in the uh, show notes and i'm also we'll just grab a few more from recent pe people who've recently commented on my videos. So Heidi of My Reading Life, Karen of Run Right Reads, uh, Siriella, Sonia of An Enthusiastic Reader, Alan Morton, and Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read. And the rest of you, you should do this. This is a, a tag that doesn't only need to be done once. I had a blast doing it a second time. And if you haven't been tagged by anybody, I'm throwing it open for the BookTube universe. Thanks for watching.